Hi everyone, welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. My name is Scott, also known as Cineram. I do the Thursday reviews here on uh, this collaboration channel. Our theme this week is Tom Cruise, uh, one of the most well-known and most disturbing uh, actors <laughs> in, uh, in all of the Americas. Um, he has uh, some image problems uh, that he's been dealing with the uh, last, uh, I don't know, seven years or so. In 2005, he was promoting War of the Worlds, which was reviewed by two other guys uh, on this channel earlier this week. Uh, and uh, in the process of doing so, appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show and kind of went crazy. Uh, really, really, really uh, uh, oversold his uh, feelings for Katie Holmes, who hasn't left him yet, unfortunately. Uh, and his whole business with Scientology, of course, is uh, still very much alive and well. Um, Scientologists believe that a intergalactic warlord named Xenu um, uh, bombarded the planet millions of years ago with nuclear bombs, and then the, alien, the creatures that were living here at that time turned into ghosts and have subsequently infected all the people that are living here now in the form of teethens, which then have to be audited uh, via a rather expensive therapy process um, that Scientology espouses. Um, this is what Scientology is built, built on. And I don't, I never really figured Tom Cruise for being a particularly gullible person, but man, I mean, I don't understand how anyone can believe all, all this stuff, really. Um, so it's, it's sad, actually, it's sad um, that all this has happened. And his whole public image involving his, you know, his uh, child and his marriage to Katie Holmes is just, you know, you know, no one can, you know, it's very, very few people that I know really believe that it's authentic. I remember in Saturday Night Live, um, I believe it was Tina Fey did a uh, weekend news update uh, in the uh, weeks leading up to uh, Tom Cruise's wedding to Katie Holmes. Uh, she said something to the effect of the, bride, uh, the groom will wear black, the bride will wear an expression of slowly dawning terror. Um, so, and, and I read actually that uh, Tom Cruise actually auditioned a few actresses to be his next leading lady in real life, like Scarlett Johansson and Jessica Alba and Jennifer Garner, I think. You know, this is all just rumor, but uh, still, it's a, little, it's a little creepy. You know, he's, uh, he's become somewhat of a creepy um, character. But in the films that he makes, he's still very, very good. He's an extremely dedicated actor. He, he, he puts forth every effort in portraying whatever character he's in. I mean, you know, he's fine and dandy in The Last Mission Impossible. Some of my favorite movies are, uh, some of my favorite performances that he's given are in War of the Worlds and Mission Impossible 3. Um, which suffered some uh, blowback uh, box office wise because uh, this was in the year after he was really sort of acting like a loon uh, and so it didn't do so well. Um, but it's actually my favorite Mission Impossible movie. Um, now, uh, one of the, uh, at first when I, when I was aware of Tom Cruise back when I was younger, I really didn't like him very much. He just reminded me of a, a frat guy, you know, this uh, very handsome, well liked sort of character that I found uh, immediately non trustworthy. You know, Top Gun, Risky Business, Color of Money, these are all sort of the uh, types of roles that made him look like a cocky uh, jerk. Um, but then in 88, I, f I saw Rain Man, uh, which co-starred Dustin Hoffman uh, and was directed by Barry Levinson and won a bunch of Oscars, but not one for Tom Cruise. He wasn't even nominated that year, despite the fact that um, he actually plays the main character. Dustin Hoffman gets top billing as the autistic uh, man Raymond. But um, as his younger brother, Charlie, uh, Tom Cruise is the one with the character arc. Raymond really doesn't change all that much. He can't. He's got this social disorder. But um, Charlie uh, changes quite a bit. Um, he grows to appreciate his uh, brother. He starts off, of course, very frustrated by him. And a lot of the movie's humor comes from him being frustrated by, uh, by uh, his, Raymond's inability to like handle situations uh, that he finds himself in. He, he, uh, uh, Charlie basically wants the money uh, that his father uh, left Raymond, so he more or less kidnaps him and is planning on taking it back to his home. Um, but uh, Raymond doesn't want to go on a plane, and so they end up driving cross country and having to deal with motels and restaurants and these, these constant changes. And Raymond isn't used to that. He's used to living in one place uh, that, is, that is staffed by doctors and nurses who can help him through his, his day. Uh, he's used to watching certain TV shows at certain times every single day because he takes much, much comfort in routine. Meals being a certain way every single day of the week. Um, you know, and he just, the, the whole uh, business of his life being thrown in disarray is extremely disturbing to him, much more than a regular person who doesn't have the disorder of autism. 
Um, so, uh, so Charlie has a lot to deal with. Um, and eventually he figures out that Raymond, as an autistic person, is uh, uh, a bit of a savant when it comes to memory and numbers. And so he takes him to Las Vegas to uh, place some bets and win a whole bunch of money um, that will uh, <laughs> actually settle his debts uh, without uh, needing to uh, extort money from his doctor and the trust and everything like that. And along the way, he develops affection for uh, Raymond, despite the fact that he didn't even know that he existed uh, for uh, for many many years, he hadn't seen him since he was a very very small child and wouldn't remember him. Um, and uh, Raymond warms to Charlie as well in his own way. Uh, he gets sort of used to him uh, in, in, in so far as he can. And uh, it, it's one of those movies that really would like to see the relationship of the characters beyond what the movie shows. You know, in the months and years after that, because. You know, it would be interesting to see if Charlie really is, uh, uh, you know, committed to um, continuing on this relationship with Raymond and to uh, continue to visit him uh, and uh, just, you know, uh, uh, continue to be a brother to him, uh, which might provide Raymond with, with some comfort. It's, it's hard to say exactly, but it's one of those things where you just sort of wonder beyond uh, the, uh, the scope of the film. What's going to happen with these characters outside of uh, uh, the, uh, the credits after the credits? Um, and it's uh, definitely one of my favorite Cruise films. And, you know, again, it's a performance that's really, really good. And he's very good in most of the movies that, he, that he's in. Like I said, he's just very, very dedicated and he puts everything into, you know, the, the films that he makes. So um, there is my uh, Rain Man review, along with a few uh, personal criticisms. Don't take it too personally, Tom, or do, you know. It's never too late to quit Scientology. Uh, so uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll have a new th theme uh, starting tomorrow. The beginning of our uh, movie-going week uh, is the same as the uh, week schedule here on the Movie Reviewers 100. The Movie Reviewers 100. The Movie Reviewers 100. Say that five times real fast. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.